Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with a whole new video. Well, coming up this week, we're going to do episode two of our series where we look at failed toy lines. Toy lines that only had one series of figures. And this week, we're going to look at the black hole. Finally going to get around to the black hole this week. And we got some more stuff coming up this week. Today, being Sunday, just want to do something a little different. Kind of a rant, kind of a ramble, kind of just a Sunday chat. Bring up some topics, see what you think about them here. And we're going to talk about collecting. And I'm going to ask the question, is collecting fun? Is action figure collecting, comic book collecting, or just collecting still fun in the internet age? Now, I'm going to sound like that old man. Back in my day. Because in, back in my day, to me, collecting was fun. And I'll be honest with you, I don't collect as much as I used to, like in the 90s or the early 2000s, because it's not fun. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoy buying a Star Wars figure or a Star Wars toy or something here and there. It's still fun, but I don't know, back in the 90s, maybe it was because I was younger or just getting into it. It was just more fun because I wouldn't just pop on my computer like this, ebay.com, and type in what I want. Leia, Poncho, Indoor Vintage, buy. That's all you do today. Back in the 90s when I started collecting, you woke up on a Saturday afternoon, nothing to do, so you headed to your local comic book store. There, maybe, some comic book stores had a small action figure aisle where they sold vintage Star Wars figures, G.I. Joe, Transformers, and things like that. So you would have your checklist. I had a book with me I carried at all times and check off figures I needed. There, once I found, there at the comic book store, if you had a figure that I need, I didn't just say, here's 20 bucks or whatever he was asking. You had to make a deal. I see you got a Han Solo Hoff Trooper. I see you got a Han Solo Hoff over there for $17. Well, I'll give you 10 for it. And they say, no, it's 17 firm. You say, well, you want a 15 for it? If not, I'll just go and then you'll be short $15 at the end of the night. So, you little bargain with you and give it to you for 15 It was a lot of fun. But the hunt was the fun thing that I kind of missed today. Just so easy to get things today. I don't understand uh, kids or people getting new into collecting now. Is it fun? Why do you collect now since there's no hunt to it? Like I said, you would start off at the comic book store. And then maybe after leaving the comic book store, or maybe you go before, you hit some local yard sales. There you could find stuff. Yes, you could. it was rare to find vintage Star Wars stuff. But in the 90s, you had a lot of kids that were hitting their early 20s or away in college. So parents were starting to sell some of their kids toys so it's easier to find vintage which is going to be almost impossible to find vintage at a yard sale today your best luck in that yard sale type arena is estate sales you still can find them there but again it's rare but it's not as rare as finding stuff at a yard sale so you hit the comic book store maybe see a figure there or not but the inventory changed so but that, the problem with comic book stores is the inventory would stay the same for months on months. So you would hit your comic book store, then go hit the yard sales, and might find things here and there. And the best thing about hunting for vintage Star Wars toys at yard sales and places, you always found stuff you didn't even know you were looking for. I remember finding some Indiana Jones toys, or just some current figures that were out, maybe out of the package, that could get them really dirt cheap. So... It was a lot of fun, not only were you looking for your Star Wars vintage collection stuff, you ran into comic books, figures, it's just anything else you could collect, just cool things. I found a lot of display racks, I found a lot of things back then to keep VHS tapes in. You never knew what you would find at yard sales. Then after the yard sales, of course, you would hit the local antique stores. Again, it's really hard to find stuff at antique stores, and when you do, most of the time at antique stores, today anyway, it's going to be jacked up price. You're not going to find a great deal at antique stores, but it happens, but it's rare. But it does happen, but again, it's rare, but it does happen, but it's rare, but it does happen. But it's rare, but it does happen. And being that you hit all these local places every week or so, you saw the same old thing, so you had to adventure out. I remember having to drive an hour or two hours away from where I lived to check out that local comic book store or yard sales or antique shop and talking to the local comic book owner about people he knew outside of that area that sold Star Wars vintage stuff or collectors that maybe was coming in this store looking for something that I could trade with. It was a lot of fun and the closer you got down your list of having a complete set it got even more fun because you have less things to find. One of the hardest for me to find believe it or not was Leia Endor. That was the last loose figure for me to get. 
Yeah, I got Yak Face. I got Blue Snaggletooth. I got all the yellows waiting for that one, and I found that one at a toy show. And that's another thing we haven't talked about, hitting toy shows. Now, this wasn't something you hit every week or every month, because toy shows would come around maybe twice a year, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the area you live. Now, I would have to drive a little over an hour to get to a toy show that they would have once or twice a year in Atlanta, and it was a lot of fun, because you never knew what you would find there. It wasn't the same thing every time you went, being that it was so spread out. But you would go there with your vintage Star Wars list or your comic book list or whatever you're collecting, your Transformer list, G.I. Joe list or whatever, and you could dig through stuff. They were, I remember finding boxes of just loose Star Wars figures, vintage, just a pile of boxes. You could dig through them. They wouldn't complete, but you could dig through them and build an army of stormtroopers or whatever else you needed. And the best thing, really back then, or not as much, you didn't have to worry about Smith, you didn't have to worry about fakes. That's right. Most of the time when you found something at a toy convention, you knew without having to ask 25 people, taking a picture of it and putting it on Facebook, if it was real or not, if it was a real lightsaber or a real figure. If you found something at a yard sale, chances are it was real. Most people weren't faking figures or weapons and selling out a yard sale. And that's the same thing with an antique store. Comic books and comic book shops, most of the people selling stuff, knew what they were selling, so you didn't have to worry about fakes. Now, I'm not going to say you didn't have to worry at all, because I bought a harpoon for my snow speeder, got back home and realized when I put it on my snow speeder, the color was a little off. So yeah, I got ripped off there. I didn't know it was a fake harpoon for a snow speeder. I didn't play a lot for it, but still, I hated buying it, knowing I just wasted my money here, that I could just bought a real one. Now, the problem is, how did you buy weapons and pieces that you needed without the internet? But well, the thing I used the most was Toy Shop Magazine. Does anybody out there remember Toy Shop Magazine? This was another hunt that you did when you were through with the comic book stores, when you were through the yard sales, the antique stores, the toy shows. Usually at night, when you're done, and I think it came out once a month, it was a, bit, it was a thick magazine, probably about that thick maybe. But it was just a black and white, like a newspaper magazine. Uh, and you would just flip through it, and every page would be ads all over. Every ads here, ads there, ever, ads everywhere. Is uh, people ads of people wanting stuff, selling stuff. And you look through it. And the only problem is when you found a weapon. They had a lot of weapons and parts there, but it was all just a black and white picture, and you didn't know what you were gonna get. It was a grainy black and white picture, and you're like, okay, there's the gun for a Han stormtrooper, Han stormtrooper, a Luke stormtrooper, I need. But that's a grainy picture. If I send this guy a check. Am I going to get this picture or just something else? So it's really hard to decide. So it's really hard buying weapons. Now, I guess, in a way, eBay and stuff made buying weapons more fun because that was always the most challenging and probably the less fun is trying to track down weapons you needed. And even back then in the 90s, it was even hard to match them up. You went by the back of the card, but a lot of times you would get one source that told you one weapon went with one guy and another source that told you you had another weapon. So I'm not really sure how fun weapons were. That's why I try to buy them complete so I wouldn't have to hunt down weapons later. Unless it was a common thing like a Bespin pistol or the Alien pistol or the Han pistol. Something that uh, is common. So it's not one of the rare guns. Maybe like the speeder bike trooper. But anyway, what I'm getting at, is it more fun today collecting or back then? Now I get you can argue that maybe it's more fun today because you have a more of a community. You have your Facebook group, you have your Twitter, you have your online forums, and you have people you can interact with. Back when I started collecting in the 90s, I was the only one I knew in my area that collected finished Star Wars stuff. I knew the guy at the comic book store that sold them, and he knew some people, and we would talk off and on there, but it wasn't a real community of friends and people gathering and trading back and forth. So I can get where the internet might bring in more fun there, where you get these new groups. You got people you can show your collection to that will love your collection and care. I would buy this stuff back in the 90s, sit them up in my room and just play them, or tell someone to all my friends about a new figure I just bought, and they'd think, hey, you're 20." two-year-old man buying toys what's wrong with you no one would get it they just didn't understand so i can understand having that community nowadays that might make it more fun so maybe i'm off base maybe it's still fun today collecting so that's why i'm putting it out there and love to see what you say in the comments if it's still fun to collecting or am i just being that old man back in my day because i had a lot of fun in the 90s traveling all around trying to collect these things and and to me the hunt for the toys or comics, or games, or whatever, was more fun. The hunt for the item was more fun than actually having the item, I think. But it was always nice to have a part of your childhood back, or maybe something from your childhood that you wanted that you just never got. And the fun of collecting wasn't just about old stuff. 
I collected a lot of new stuff in the 90s. The X-Men figures, the new Star Wars figures, Star Trek Playmates, and it was a lot of fun. You had Toys Us, you had KB's, you had Walmart, you had Target, you had Roses, you had Kmart. You had hundreds of other stores I'm probably not thinking about where you could look for figures. You would get up, you would drop to Kmart one day, hit their toy section, head over to Toys Us, hit their toy section, run into the mall and go to... KB and check out their toy section. They may while you there check out Suncoast and check out the video game section, buy you a movie poster or something. So it was really cool. Now what do you got today? Besides getting online, your town maybe has two Walmarts, maybe. Unless you live in a huge city, you might have more. Your town might have a Target. If it does, it probably just has one. Again, again, unless you're in a major city. And Kmart's gone. Toys Us is gone. KB's is gone. Almost everything is gone. So... When you go for a toy hunt on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, where do you go? Walmart. What do you see at Walmart? The same old thing. Everything's the same. No matter what Walmart you go in, you can go in a Walmart in Orlando, Florida, or a Walmart in Tupelo, Mississippi, and guess what? You're going to see the exact same figures in the exact same four-foot section. I mean, the stores will look alike. You could take that Tupelo Walmart and put it in Orlando, and then Orlando into Tupelo, and you wouldn't even know the difference. It's all the same. And that's basically about the same for Target, too. Sure, one might be more stock, well stocked than the other, but overall, you know what you're going to get before you get out of your car in that parking lot. So, why even run around and hunt? But you can go online and buy it. And again, where's the fun of just typing in something you're looking for into Google and hitting a buy button? Is that fun? Again, not fun to me, but maybe I'm just getting old and I'm stuck in my ways. Then I can rant about exclusives that make it too hard to buy stuff nowadays. Remember back in the 90s, the Star Trek Playmates action figure line? When they did an exclusive line that made it very hard for anyone to have the complete figure set? It was known as the 1701 line, where they had three figures they only made 1,701 figures of. It was a Picard, which wasn't a big problem because people had a different Picard. And I think it was Barkley, the guy that played Murdoch in 18, remember when he was on Star Trek? Again, that was the only way you could get the figure, and I believe it was a Tasha Yar. Maybe it was different than the normal release Tasha Yar, but the thing is, it really upset collectors because they couldn't finish a set because they made it too hard for these figures to get. So Playmate decided to re-release them in more numbers, and the damage was already done. A lot of collectors had moved on. It hurt the collector's market for Star Trek Playmates, so by the time Playmates realize this and help the collectors out by pushing more out there they have moved on and you can time the decline of star wars playmate collectors right about that same time and today the exclusives are even a lot worse today and the thing is back in the old days they would usually do an exclusive to like kmart would have a figure that was based on a figure you could get everywhere else let's say they did a wolverine from x-men kb might do that same figure but he's wearing green so if you collect the line, it really didn't matter. It would be cool if you got the exclusive green one, but you could have the basic figure already that you could pick up at any toy store. Now what do they do? They release something like Boa Fett, a character that we all love, and have an exclusive to Comic-Con. And the exclusives used to mean just that, exclusives. That's where you got it at. Now exclusives mean only at Comic-Con. Well, we're going to put it online. Well, we might ship some to Target. Well, this other convention is probably going to have it also. So it's not even exclusive. You can't say, look at this, I got this at Comic-Con. It's the only place you could get it. So why even do it? If you're going to do an exclusive, release it just at an exclusive place and make it something cool, but not something that just, as a collector, you're just going to need. You know, do a Boba Fett, release the Boba Fett normally for us all, but maybe change the package or something that maybe comes with some different accessories for Comic-Con and call it a Comic-Con exclusive. And guess what? Release it just at Comic-Con. Or release it just online and don't call it an exclusive. But really suck the fun of it. I don't know anyone that collects modern day Star Wars that can collect a full line. Because it's just too many exclusives. And I think Hasbro likes the buzz of being sold out. So when they take something that was for Comic Con only. Put up online. I think they only sell about 10 of them. That way they can brag they sold out within 5 minutes. I did a whole rant about exclusives, so I'm not going to get into that here, because we're talking about the fun of collecting. And I'm asking you, is it still fun to collect action figures, comic books, or whatever, or as the fun time passed on? One thing I get asked a lot is, does Star Wars vintage have a future? In 30, 40 years, when most of us that grew up on those toys are dead and gone, would anyone care about vintage Star Wars figures? Now, I can see the argument that a lot of people buy these old ones as a memory of their childhood. And they invest in that. But when it comes to Star Wars, I think we're looking at something a little different than the average figure. 
These Star Wars figures aren't just something you grew up with, and that's why you want to collect them. The Star Wars vintage line changed the toy industry. Anyone that gets into collecting toys, there's going to be a market for vintage Star Wars toys. Will it be as high demand as it is for us that grew up with them? That's hard to say. But anyone that's going to get into toys and look back at the history of toys are going to want some Star Wars vintage toys as history. And Star Wars is a different type of movie where there's a lot of new generation getting into Star Wars each year. With the new movies from Disney, it makes the older ones even more popular with the new people. So there's going to be a lot of people that want to go back and collect the old basic figures. Again, will they be in high demand as they are today? That's hard to say. But I think there will always be a market for vintage Star Wars figures more than they are for the new stuff. Because there's a lot of history there from the early days of Star Wars to the early days of pop culture to the early days of action figures. Anyway, I'm going to put it out for you guys in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Am I just being that old man that just back in my day it was a lot more fun? Or is toy collecting or just collecting in general missing something today? Mostly thanks to the internet where there's no hunt for it at all. Or... Do you still like to hunt? Do you stay away from eBay and stuff and try to find it on your own? Please let me know in the comments below what you think about collecting today. Please let me know if I'm off the mark or maybe I'm right on it. And if you're a younger person that collects vintage, because I know there's some of you out there in your teens that collect Star Wars vintage, let me know why you collect it, being that you didn't grow up with these figures like a lot of us. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Please thumb up for this video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be back later this week with a lot more videos. Until then... Fred, get in your cockpit and take us out of here. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.